States. Yeah, so um, I was just thinking about wanting to do a little video about picking up stitches. Um, Cause I know a bunch of people are gonna be at that place where they're picking up for the collar. Uh, then there's the button band, that's a whole other thing. But um, I think that can be tricky for some people, you know, if you've not done it for a while or just wrapping your mind around which which one do I pick up and how do I do it and how do I, you know, how do I know I'm picking up the right number in the right section? So I might do a little video tutorial about that. That would be awesome. Sounds the good. Sleeves, the sleeves were easy because there weren't that many stitches to deal with. Right. But when you exactly. have to go all the way around that neckline, that could be tricky. And I, and I was working, I don't know, um, I think it was the second session last Sunday, so you wouldn't have been there, Sue, but uh, a person who popped in and her, she started her Ramona a little early. She was so excited. So she was had a finished sweater, but she's also torn, in, torn out parts and put them back in. And this has really a, <laughs> been a great skill building experience for her. Um, but what she realized with the neck was that um, she picked up stitches too far in. So it was a little, like it looked like probably it would have been okay with blocking, but it was a little bit kind of like doing one of these, kind of curling because she she just picked up too far in. And I, um, yeah, so there's other videos too, but I just thought it might be nice for our Ramona folks to get some some info Excellent. about that when Excellent. it comes up. Well, I've got my first sleeve done wonderful the body and i've started my second sleeve so it sounds like we're pretty much together with the others and their progress and pat can you remind me is that the charcoal gray of the cat no this what is, is your... this is um it looks like it's gray under this lights but this is purple oh, this is um a, a jewel tone um it's not lavender it's darker but i forget okay. the, the, the color because it has a color number but when i ordered it. it online it had a name but i don't remember yep. what the name was but it's purple and it's vintage yarn is that what it's, i remember uh, no it's um um it's uh, barocco's mercado oh yeah great and oh and it's wonderful it i can't wait for it to be blocked because it's going to be so soft and so warm. That is wonderful. It's just knitting up beautifully. I the, I couldn't be happier with this yarn. Looks like you've got a nice gauge for the fabric too. Yes, it it just really looks so nice and um, even and smooth and um, warm. It, even the uh, the the binding at the bottom, it just looks so finished. You know, it just really looks good. I'm excited about it, except for the neck. <laughs> and we'll we'll get to the neck. <laughs> hey, Sue, are you talking to us? Because I think you're muted. Sorry, I was asking what yarn that was. Uh, that's the uh, Bar uh, Barocco Mercado. Okay. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank you. And I just uh, wove, I just did up a new ball of yarn today because I'm starting the second sleeve. So I, it's kind of the color of your vest. Oh, mm. I know that color well. Yeah. It's, it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> look like it on this. Oh, yes. I can see it beautiful. really well now. Yep. It's about computer bubble. lighting. It's weird. It's a little more purple than, my, or I don't know. Uh, maybe they're pretty close. Looks like I think so. What What is your yarn? You got that heavier yarn, don't you? I I got the um, Katmandu. Yes, right. It's heavier than this one. This is a is a. Uh, I don't know that it's a um, worsted weight. I think it's just a little lighter than worsted. Oh, the Mercado is we um. I think we have the Mercado in the bulky section and 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 the and the and the Catman. Oh, maybe so. Maybe this is here. called mm -hmm. yeah, maybe this is called bulky. 
I've just not used, I usually use fingering weights. So this is all heavier for me. Right. So this just says 100% Peruvian Highland wool, but it right. doesn't say what the, how heavy it is. Uh, it's a number five bulky. Yep, perfect. So welcome to folks who have just popped in. We are recording this one. Kristen was hopeful that we could record just so she could get the feeling for how how these Wednesdays are going, which is really fun. Um, Melissa, how are you doing this week? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, I am. I had to finish another knitting project, so I didn't get to work on Ramona very much. But um, I'm really like how it's turning out. So I'm happy. Can will you remind us of your yarn? Um, it is Barocco vintage and it is tropical. Nice. Awesome. Um, how about you, Judy? How are you doing this week? <laughs> I've had a few struggles, so I'm a little bit behind. I got frustrated on Sunday and I just ripped everything out. So oh, I started heart. over and I'm fine. Pat, pardon? Bless your heart. <laughs> well, I'm kind of like, I want everything to be just right. So I know I've done that before myself. So I totally get it. So, <laughs> but I'm, I, I'm on track. I mean, I'm not really on track, but everything's going fine now. And if well, I just remember, I'm, this is not a race, right? We're just say all right. plenty of time. Yep. And I'm also trying to uh, get my house in order to sell it to downsize and move. <laughs> so that's that's a time. that's a big undertaking as well. Yeah, it's it's monstrous, and uh, we we will survive it, and I will be happy after we've moved. <laughs> <laughs> well, just don't pack up your yarn. Like, uh, was it oh, no, Teresa? No. Was it you? Barbara. Did you like almost? A Barbara. Barbara, it was Barbara, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, moving is no fun, but mm -hmm. I want to move. <laughs> and are you enjoying your yarn for your Ramona? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like the color very much. And I had trouble because I chose, I would have preferred to have bought it online from you. but. I just didn't feel confident that I would be getting exactly the color I wanted. So I, sure, I decided sure. to support my local yarn store and they didn't have, their stock was a little low. So mm -hmm. anyhow, I'm, I'm happy with what I chose. What is it, if I could ask? It's Malabrego Rios. Okay, nice. So you're, are you knitting the lightweight? No, actually I'm doing the heavier okay. one because okay. uh, it, that I couldn't get it to work on the lighter one. Okay, great. And they, they told me it was the weight I wanted. I think they were stretching it. Well, okay. as long as you've got but your measurements point, and your gauge, that's all yeah, good. Yeah, I think, I think well, I'm just, I just got a different size and worked from there. Great. So it should be okay. I, I, what I color is it? It's uh, Wales Road. Oh, cool. Wales Road. It's Wales Road is that beautiful, beautiful, dark, dark blue with so many beautiful little tones. Yeah, I really is, like the cut, which is what I was looking for colors along that line. I was mm -hmm. trying to decide between blue and, and purple, a dark blue and purple. And I thought, oh, this you, is gray. Are you Pardon. knitting the pullover or the cardigan? I'm doing the cardigan. Okay. And uh, so far, it's it's the colors are coming out fine as far as there's not any weird breaks or differences. Since it's if I can <laughs> ask Judy, what were what was the issue for you um, that was that was difficult? <laughs> Doing two things at once. Got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And so I got into, I would miss a stitch and then, you know, I'd go back and I fix that one. And then finally, I realized something's off here. Oh. And I decided, that, you know, why don't you just start over and get into the right frame? 
And so that has, yeah, I, I had, again, you know, I was doing two things at once, watching television and doing this. And uh, I mean, I, I did, but I, it, it was every, I'm counting every row. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have it all written down what everything should be because I'm in that one area where you have to part four of the fragment shaping. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I just check off every one because I've written them all out. So I don't forget where I am. I forget where I am. <laughs> we all have to have our, our systems. And I'll tell you what, I, I was going gangbusters with the second sleeve on Sunday during the meetup and I thought everything was great. Um, and somehow I was miscounting. I even had a place on my paper where I thought I was going <laughs> track and I got, I got right off my own course and I got home and I was like, oh, wow. So that four inches of knitting. I, I was, I was doing uh, my decrease round, uh, one round too short. Anyway, I had to take it out, but it was fine. I mean, it knits up pretty quick. So, but it was still one of those like, oh, well, these things happen to all of us. <laughs> you know, it, it just knitting it. I mean, it's relaxing. So I try not to make it stressful. Great attitude. Hey, Teresa, how are you this week? Me there. Yeah, I've been making some progress. I'm in the middle of the body at this point. Awesome. That's the like smooth sailing, cruise control knitting. Yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. Which is good. I'm working on a, a different sweater at the same time, working two projects at once and the a little bit harder and so it's good to be able to go back and forth <laughs> and are you settled in your new house now oh, there's a lot of boxes <laughs> <laughs> at least you have your knitting unpacked so that's the main yep. thing right yeah mm -hmm. for sure <laughs> yep. how about can't... you bev how's oh sorry go ahead yeah i was just gonna say can't find anything i spent all day looking for one particular box. Yeah, that's so hard. And it always seems to me too that, at, you know, it's like towards the end where you think like, wow, I'm really so close as you're packing your house up. And then there's like 10 more boxes and like probably eight of them are really random things that you're like, I don't know, just dump the whole drawer in there. Like I'm so <laughs> sorted out on the other side. Yeah. You're fine. <laughs> All right, Bev, how's it going? Um, very slowly, but that's okay. I this is my first sweater, and so there's a a lot of stuff that's new, you mm -hmm. know, and so I, I have to pull out other yarn and practice the technique while watching the videos and stuff like that. And sometimes it just feels like I don't have enough hands to hold it all. <laughs> but um yep yeah, slow but sure I'm, and i'm learning a lot of stuff and that's why i'm doing it so that's good i'm i'm happy that's, that's fabulous and do you feel like um you know you, we can always talk through an issue um too yeah and i may try to come down we we're going to western new york for my mother's 95th birthday next week weather providing <gasps> But when we get back from that, I want to try to come down and spend a little time with you. So, but it's good. I think I for a minute when I pop back in. I don't know. That's okay. The weather maybe. So yeah, we'd love to have you come back down. To the There's just too too much temptation there. <laughs> That's true. It is true. Yep. There are so many other knitters um, who come on Saturday, right? Saturday to Cashmere Goods. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday sorry, um, who come on Sunday where this is their first sweater. So yes. I think it's really cool to see um, so many people tackling a sweater, but, but doing it with a group 
What a great way to learn. Um, it, it's probably the only way that I think I would do it is, you know, having the knit along. So I my neighbor the hill. To try. Uh, yeah, it gives you the courage to try. And then you're kind of learning about the structure. And I mean, raglan is a really common sweater construction and it's so great because it's so customizable. And um, I was just about to say that my neighbor up the hill, this, she's like on her second gauge swatch and she is not rushing this process. She wants to get it right. She's, you know, really wants to make this good. And she's like, yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm on the second gauge swatch, you know, it's, it's <laughs> so. Bless her heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Lucy, how are you? Yes. Um, I'm doing fine. I separated my sleeves. So I'm, oh, I think I'm only about two rows away from starting the A-line shaping. Nice. Hey, great. So mine's, mine's going fine. I like, I have Azure and I really like my color. Beautiful. And it's nice and soft, so. And that's the walk, is that the um, cat man? Cat do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And again, I still you don't have my face on my screen. Um, do you want to have your face on the screen? You don't have to. No, I'm fine having it on. It just, okay. when I, like I have a 630 Bible study. When I go on my Bible study Zoom, my face automatically pops up. I don't know why it's not popping up when I come in to knit. It could be um, a setting just like I think I set it up. I, maybe I had set it up to have it um, so that your video is not on when you first come in, because I think that gives people a little minute to make sure they're ready for it. But uh, you should be able to put your put your video on if you want to. Hmm. Oh, it's down in the lower left corner. Lower left. lower left corner if you're on a computer it may say something about start your video or something like that yeah i'm on i'm on my macbook air yep so then if you hover your mouse in the lower left corner of the zoom screen you should see start like video. the microphone yep okay And here she, here she there is. she is. Hey, now I have thank you. <laughs> Fresh out of the ether. Okay, so show us that color again. Yeah, hold it up. Mm. Fox, so it'll come on the live screen. It's it's there you that's go. A good representation of the blue that's coming that's through. That's pretty. It is. It's got specks of black and specks of white, like a really light bluish leaning toward white. So I am making progress. Perfect. We had a, uh, have had a couple of folks who are, you know, this is their first sweater and they're already buying their yarn for their second, second Ramona because they kind of <laughs> want to cement their skills and keep up with, you know, now that they've understood it, they want to jump right back in before they lose it, which I thought that's pretty fun. I'd like to do a lighter, I mean, this is heavy, mm -hmm. so it's not, I'm not going to get much use out of it. And I'd like to be able to do a lighter one, lighter weight one when I'm finished. Mm -hmm. I, um, I really love it when people buy a pattern and then make multiples in part, just because it's so cost-effective, mm -hmm. um, both in terms of buying the pattern but also in terms of the time you spend knitting, because if you just mm -hmm. finish something, even if you're going from like a cardigan to a pullover or from the heavyweight to a lightweight, um, it's, it's really, it's economical and saves you time as a knitter because you just knit the pattern. You don't have to decode things and all of that, you know, it's faster, so. You raised such a good point, Sarah, about the, the decoding time, you know, the time it takes <laughs> to sort of, even if you're an experienced knitter, to look at how a pattern is written, to understand the pattern writer's flow. And as we heard um, last week when we met with Elizabeth, you know, she has a little bit of a different approach to pattern writing, which I've definitely heard 
some knitters finding her sometimes a little wordy, um, like it just, especially ex maybe more experienced knitters where it's like, wait, but she just told me this whole thing and now she's writing it in pattern language. So for those of us who are experienced, that's, we don't need all the words. We can like read the pattern, but for our friends who are on their first um, sweater, sometimes I think that narrative is helpful um, to give the, the knitter that sense of where, what, what the heck they're doing right then. Bev, I, saw I need you nodding. all the words. I definitely need all the words. <laughs> yeah, like the sleeve divide was like four four different steps, which you don't find in many patterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting problem to write patterns. And I think working with a bunch of knitters as I am during the sit along, I'm really becoming more aware of not only the writing that goes into patterns, but also how different brains process information. Um, it can be really interesting to watch folks figure stuff out. Yeah, I, Hi, Jennifer. I, oh, Sarah, what were you about to say? I was just going to say, I, I appreciate having choices for patterns because we do think differently. And, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a parent of a non-neurotypical kid, you know, who always thinks differently. So I, I just love being able to have like, written and sort of the math version. And, you know, sometimes a pattern will give you, um, you know, the pattern where you're checking off your boxes kind of a thing. I, I just, I love having choices. I think it's great. Do you know yeah. of anybody who uh, is making the cardigan, but knitting it in the round and then steaking? <gasps> No, I, I don't. I thought about doing that. And and I was wondering if anybody had actually done it. So there was a knitter who was at one of our Sunday sessions, maybe the very first one, and she was doing a lightweight, wanted to do the lightweight cardigan. And she was like, what about knitting in the round and steaking? And I was like, you could do it but you would be flying on your own for that because I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure how to adapt the pattern to incorporate a steak. I mean, I'm sure I could learn, but um, I'm not sure what she decided because she, she didn't check in last week. I saw her on the Zoom, but I didn't get a follow-up on her decision. Okay. Tell me about, uh, just because you, do you hate purling? I know I have a colleague at the yarn store who hates to purl and she was like, there's no way I'm going to do a cardigan and, I, I don't mind purling and actually um, I can purl pretty, pretty good. I mean, pretty rapidly, well. but it is so much easier to, and not, you don't have to use your brain to just keep knitting in the round. And mm -hmm. um, so I just thought maybe if somebody else had the guts to, uh, do a cardigan knit in the round and then steak, then I would try it. You could be the pioneer. No, no, oh, that's okay. <laughs> I would love to learn that technique yeah. because I, if, when I knit in the round, my stitches are just so even. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when I'm switching back and forth, even mm -hmm. though I, in mm -hmm. general, I prefer to wear cardigans. I think they're really versatile. Um, but <laughs> the switching back and forth, it, it means that my tension is ever so slightly off and I can fix it a little bit. Um, when I can fix it a little bit, but not a hundred percent, you know, so I think Ann Bud is teaching a sticking, um, workshop. Hmm. Um, I've steaked color work cardigans before and it's it's really easy you would just need to add I don't know like I'm thinking maybe 10 stitches to the pattern that would be your steak and because it's not color work it would be really simple because you don't have to do any spit splicing mm -hmm. or anything like that you just keep going you would just have to mark where the steak is and 
because there's no spit splicing, you probably want to sew it down, you know, on a sewing machine on both sides before you mm -hmm. actually do cutting. But mm -hmm. um, you could definitely do it. And if somebody else wants to do it, I'm only on like my fourth row. <laughs> so I could switch to a steak just from the fifth row up, or I could just start over again and, and do a steak if somebody else wants to do it too. I would definitely be interested in learning that on my next Ramona, because I, I think one isn't enough for me. I'd like to mm -hmm. make another. Um, so that would be such a fun technique to learn. I never even considered that. And I, I have seen a few people on Ravelry um, stitch on the inside of the cardigan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they would stitch a little fabric layer just to keep the mm -hmm. button strip, you know, perfectly flat and lined up, which, and it looks nice too. It's, you know, it's like an extra feature when you sort of like open your, your mm -hmm. cardigan and, and have that, but, um, how cool. Never even mm -hmm. thought of that. <laughs> I just didn't know how it would be with the steaking and then picking up the stitches to add the um, the collar and the uh, front strip. It's it's nighttime, so my brain is losing words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I actually trying probably, probably like in terms of picking up the stitches. I think that that part would be pretty similar uh in terms of how how you typically would um yeah i don't i don't think that that would be the the issue i think the issue like jennifer was saying is you know including enough down your front part you know expanding that front part of the pattern with more stitches so that as you steak you've got that extra that's going to be your your seam yeah the other challenge is if you play yarn chicken like i do and <laughs> you might be in trouble <laughs> oh wait, I have to I have to hold up something that um a lot of you I think know kinder or uh from the shop who's so amazing and she gave me the best button now. I might have to unblur my oh no, can you oh, I'm gonna unblur my background. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You'll get to see my messy bed where the dog was lying a little while ago. Okay. <laughs> you know, background none. Okay. So wait till you see this cute button. Yarn chicken champ. I love <laughs> it. At that. Oh. And the and the egg, you can't see because it's the light isn't great, but the egg is a ball of yarn. How cute is that? Oh, oh I love it. <laughs> cute. Uh, I'm kind of new to this. What's what forgive my ignorance? What is a yarn chicken? Oh, Bev, so yarn chicken is when your ball of yarn is getting a little small and you're like, do I have enough for, did, I need like three more rows, is it going to make it? <laughs> or in my case, I was making a shawl for my mom using some of the Seven Sisters yarns this Christmas and it was two colors, beautiful. And I was like, you know, on the long edges that just felt like <laughs> every row was just like a marathon. and. I was doing yarn chicken and I realized that about half, about almost to halfway through that there was no way that I was going to have an, I was on my Pico bind off edge. Like, what was I thinking? I should have oh. stopped so much sooner. You know what I did? I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do my Pico in one of the colors and I'll end that one and I'll do the other side of the triangle in the other color Pico and you know what she didn't even notice so I just pretended it was a design component look how fun this is oh look. that's cool very cool it can be stressful though and always my tendency is like knit faster knit faster so you can you know like make it there sooner and obviously that is not uh gonna help me out cool Jennifer, how's your project coming along? Oh, I'm, on, I'm on the fourth row. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> too much time doing work and other things. Yeah. Hold up the, the beautiful yarn you have so everybody can see. Oh, oh I love that color. Do it oh, again. Beautiful. Say something so it'll 
pop-up. Wow. It's it's got the there you go. Oh, Ooh. pretty. Yeah. All the, or, what's this? Boysenberry. And it's Ooh. got it's really like two colors, which is why I like it because it's like a real standard yarn, but sometimes I like Oops, to work. She froze. With oh. Sometimes I like to work with a very standard yarn like this walkabout. And when I work with a really plain yarn, I like it when the color is really fun and has it has that depth. Because of the blue undertones with the pink, it, it'll get like this bloom when it's done. That'll have almost mm. like a translucent effect when you're outside. So I picked it. Oh. Then I saw the raspberry color in the store on Sunday and I was like, oh, maybe I should have done that. <laughs> Iris, it's wasn't that one of the beautiful. yarns you featured in your email today? Yes, it was. It was I do one read of the featured yarns. That's so exciting when people read the emails. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, that's the yarn I picked. <laughs> that's my yarn. Yeah. Beautiful that's color. That's great. And, and it's such a nice, I mean, that Shetland wool has such a, a beautiful, like, because um, it is, it's a, it's a DK, is it? Yes. A DK? Yes. Yeah. Sport, sport and DK. A sport DK, and it and it just has that really. I don't know how to describe it. It feels like wool. It feels like you know, and the the color variety. So it really is perfect, I think, for color work, and especially when you're doing stranded color work like that cowl. So nice because it's not too heavy. You know, you're working with the lighter weight yarn. Yeah, that's gonna be so pretty. Mm. Well, who's using that yarn? That is Jennifer. I am. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's the one that's the two tone color. Because the ones that were in the in the uh, new the email today, those were so beautiful. I just wanted to, those were yummy. You just want to get your hands well, on. You, yeah, and you know that that effect that you were speaking of, Jennifer. It makes me think about Cumbria, which is by the Fiber Company. It's one of the yarns mm -hmm. we carry, and there's this particular color, and I've chosen it for my husband's neck, his next sweater. It's been like over ten years since I made him a sweater, so he's gonna get the next oh. one after this, Ramona. And I picked Cumbria in this gorgeous color that's called Black Beck, I think. And I saw it knit up. I don't know if you guys follow the Instagram back in the fall, we had a customer come in with the sweater that his wife had just knit for him. And I did a little photo shoot with him on the bridge. Is this beautiful cabled sweater in the black back. And what was so amazing about it was it, it has that effect of, is it a Navy is there, but there's a halo of teal, but it's dark teal. So it just feels like this dynamic. And like you're saying with that boysenberry, it adds such richness to your garment. I think, did you put that picture in one of the emails of the gentleman wearing the sweater? Yes. That mm -hmm. was that, beautiful. I think and he looked so dignified in it. I mean, it was just really nice. He kind of like was right ready for that photo shoot. I was like, oh my gosh, we have to take pictures. And then he was like, oh yeah, let's go. So off we went <laughs> to the bridge and that worked great. <laughs> cool how are you it looks like mary ellen how are you i'm fine i i joined and then i had to do something for work which is usually i don't usually have to at this time but I you thought can I better... always just turn your you can turn your camera off and do whatever anybody can okay. just pop up in and out i had to leave the zoom earlier because the dogs were like going crazy and i Thank God for mute, but I was like, I can't even let them see my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> how's your How's your sweater coming, Mary Ellen? Well, I was late start. I was late joining the the cow, but anyway, I got my yarn last Thursday, and I'm using the the Queensland, and oh. I, I'm on the rock about. Is that yeah. that one that you're talking about? The same one, the walkabout? Oh, I think good. that looks like Katmandu to me. Oh, it's, is it Kat is Katmandu. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Uh -huh. yeah. The same, the same yarn maker, Queensland makes both of them. Oh, okay. And uh, I go on section three. Um, Great. So um, I'll, I'll be dividing for the underarm tomorrow. So that's pretty good. 
Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> and you started last week? <laughs> Way faster. Pretty good. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> For, for those of us who are in the mid coast area of Maine right now, it's, it's this is like the perfect time of year to have this project because like half the restaurants are closed and half the shops downtown close. Some, some of them will only close for like two to four weeks, but others are closed for like months. <laughs> so it, it's, I mean, we're home anyway, you know, so it's, it's a good activity to be doing. So it's nice. It can also be somewhat social that's what we are out to dinner tonight as soon as i'm done with knitting we called seven restaurants like ones that we <laughs> knew that were open this time last year but they decided to close for the whole month of january this year and yeah it was tough to find a place open <laughs> one of the things i like about knitting is that i can still work on it when the power is out Right. Yes, that is true. <laughs> well, in Maine, a lot of us have felt like fortunate to finally get a little bit of winter going on because um, it seems like big old storms like we've had this past week are becoming more and more rare. So being out, I was out today in the snowy woods with the dogs and it was just so special. And I'm kind of hearing that we're with this latest storm that's already started that we're going to get rain. <laughs> well, I will tell you that they told us that we were going to have one to three inches of snow this morning and we got a dusting and then it, we were supposed to get about a half an inch of rain this afternoon to get rid of all of the snow and we got a sprinkle. So this storm is not uh, building up to be as bad as they anticipated. So hang on, it could be very nice up there. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Pennsylvania and this is the first snow that will stick around for a couple days that we've had all winter. Okay, well, I'm in Maryland, so I got it just before you did. So it's yeah, you on did. its way to you. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't start till 11 o'clock this morning. Right. Although schools closed really early last night in anticipation of this. So we've had blizzard conditions within the past week, at least a couple of times. Mm, and where I'm, are you? I'm mid coast Maine. I'm on the. Um, oh, okay. I'm on the Booth Bay Peninsula, and, but I moved here from Vermont within the past year, so I'm really happy to see all the snow. It makes me feel like I'm back in Vermont, but not everybody around here is happy with the snow. <laughs> I just don't like it when it's like, like. They call it stick season because you just see the brown tree trunks and there's no leaves and there's no snow and it's just dark and agreed if it's going to be dark and cold i would much rather have beautiful you know forest around me i'd much rather be able to go out and do things it's just like doesn't feel inspiring to go out in the yucky damp brown world yeah <laughs> feels like the snow is better for my garden anyway just because it you know it like it's like a good blanket for the soil it insulates it and then eventually the moisture goes in um mm -hmm. but yeah it and it, it makes me feel like oh it's winter mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i love it when fertilizer here in Maine. yes yeah, is if it all melts too soon, then you got to worry about, oh man, what perennials am I going to lose or what, what shrubs are going to be unhappy? So I'm, I'm loving this blanket because actually, since we just moved here, I haven't, don't have a lot of things planted that I care about yet, but it's nice that it's here and uh, I hope it takes a long time to melt in the spring so I don't get overwhelmed. I don't have to start with the landscape too early. <laughs> the next it's season. probably like Vermont in terms of how late our springs are, I'm guessing. Yeah, I don't think it's too far off, but it is a little bit different. It's just a little bit mm -hmm. warmer here than yeah. where I came from. Okay, so 
Um, question I, I referenced in a blog post a couple of weeks ago about watching all the new season of All Creatures Great and Small and making my mistake in my knitting then. Um, <laughs> I just love the knitwear so much. It's so fun to watch that show. And I feel like I should be knitting vests for every man in my life right now. <laughs> I saw online somebody was using the uh, the hashtag knit flicks, like you're watching it for the knitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I've seen whole when when I was watching Outlander, every yeah. show was another wrap or a shawl, you know, it was belted or it was tied and I, it all looks so yummy. And I'm like, I don't have time to knit something different like that every week. <laughs> Yeah. But I hadn't thought about knitting because that's that's finer knitting that's worn in the all creatures great and small. Yeah, a lot of fun color work and yeah. Yeah, like a cashmere vest with multiple colors or <laughs> be pretty great. Yeah, my um husband looked over my shoulder when I was reading that email actually and laughed at me because I've been watching that show and knitting and okay one of the things I noticed and maybe not so much in the recent season but um I love that in previous seasons like Mrs. Hall had that blue cardigan that was you could tell was like her work cardigan and you could even tell and I just love the detail so much like the button looked like it had been like the buttonhole looked like it had been mended and I was like "Ooh, some costumer is doing their job like <laughs> this is not a woman who would be like wearing a different cardigan every day like you know she looked all put together but she had her little like blue cardigan she wore yep, I can't even remember the name of oh it was Oh, I don't remember the name of the show, but there was another, I think it was a public television series that had the women that went to the farm girls that went to work on the farms. And there were, there were knitted things there too. And then there were like the mm -hmm. stockings and I would, I'm not gonna, I wouldn't bother, but <laughs> they had some neat stuff in that show too. That's one of the nice things about being able to knit is that you can knit something from any era, you know, like you don't have to wait for some style to come back to be able to purchase it. Like you can just make it <laughs> and you don't have to make it in the original, you know, like undyed ivory merino wool. You can make it in any color you want, you know, <laughs> any size you want. So I, it's just such a cool skill to have. And sometimes and I think it's really, it's, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sometimes I do really like those old fashioned, like Downton Abbey style, you know, mm -hmm. like knits and stuff, even just like, you know, the hats or whatever. They're just really, really fun. Yeah, I bought one of the, I bought one of the magazines that was, I don't know if you guys have seen the Jane Austen knits. I mean, I, I buy the magazines just to have them, not that I necessarily am going to make anything in it, but one of them, the tops, I just loved it. It has like a fitted bust and then it kind of blouses out. It's almost like a baby doll shaped top and it has tiny bit of puff to the sleeves and they're not really long sleeves. And I like that because I'm always too warm. And it takes two different kinds of wool. So I figured all that out and I just have it waiting because <laughs> I have too many projects on needles. But that, it, that Jane Austen knits, there was a lot of stuff in there that looked like things from Downton Abbey or maybe there were things in there from Downton Abbey, I can't remember. I also really appreciated in in some of the period shows like Downton Abbey, just the colors, just the color palettes of the garments, of the furniture, of the wallpaper. 
Um, it's just so nice to enter a time period through like textiles and home decoration a little bit. Um, I know what I was going to ask you guys. Have any of you done, I know Sue probably has, but has anybody here done the fiber side chats that we offer? Like it's um, through Longmont, Longmont Yarn Shop in Colorado. No, I'd love to, but I haven't yet. I missed the last one. I had I need to to see it on Zoom, but yes, I've done two of them, I think. They're fun. It's really it's so fun. I did my first one was um gosh, back in December, I think, with the the two ladies from Newfoundland, oh, I think. Yes. yes, I missed that one. I need to watch that. <laughs> oh, so so you I think you only get the recording access for like one week or something. Oh. But um but it's really fun. I mean, for twenty dollars, I sort of feel like I'm going out to the knitting movies just by myself at home with my knitting, uh, which I think is great. Um, but it's so interesting to see folks talk about the craft and so keep your eyes out for some of those um the more of them will be coming but it's just a really neat way to get a sense of different techniques different ways to think about knitting the other one that i did was the one with oh golly i can't remember the designer's name but she's all about she's all about like a i forget the name of it that she has but uh asa uh, osa tricosa or something is her name and it's everything from she's missed a single piece of garment and just getting inside of the way her brain was thinking about it but like a sweater that's made to fit you it's not it's not even like a raglan it's like she's going back and forth doing shaping on the neck and then she's doing like sideways for here and it was very interesting. Again, maybe I won't ever make something like that, but just to know the innovation and the incredible imagination of some of these designers out there. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, keep your eye out on the emails because I'll, I'll usually put some of those at the bottom. So, so sorry. That's I'm going to mute myself really quick because there might be dogs barking. Husband just got home. <laughs> <laughs> so that the fireside is through through it's through Longmont Yarns in Colorado. And that's actually uh the store that Ann Bud that sponsors Ann Bud's um classes. Oh interesting. So, so like you, when you were mentioning the steaking workshop, Sue, was that also through Longmont? Did you see? I think so. Okay. So you can, I can look it up. I have sign my... up to get their emails. Yep. Yep. To find out. And you can, and so what it's really kind of a neat model. So we are, we're able to sell seats at the Zooms through the GOAT or through other yarn stores around the country too. So it's must be, I think a, it's a smart way to do it, I think on their part, because it gets a more participants and, and I'm sure defray, it helps to defray the cost of having the folks come to speak. Yeah, that's, that's a really neat way of doing it. I like that. Well, I know, I know we're in Maine, but I did come here from Vermont and in Vermont, we started a knitting guild just within the past few years. And the Vermont Knitting Guild um, meets on Monday evenings. They still, they have like open knitting on Monday evenings and it's on Zoom. And then about once a month, they have a speaker or a workshop and it might be somebody that's in the knitting guild that's presenting it. Um, and then sometimes they'll, pay for a speaker um, or somebody in the guild has a specific skill and they'll get paid too. But I'm trying to think of, they've done things about like universal pattern terminology. Um, they had a thing about Ravelry once, you know, how, how to navigate in Ravelry. And then there were all these changes to Ravelry and how do I do it now? And, and how do I set up my page to work for me? And different 
different types of cast ons and what's the purpose and you know and it was different it's different things every month sometimes it's really advanced but it's still interesting sometimes it's really basic but it doesn't hurt to go back <laughs> and um they have some really good programs from time to time so i would encourage people to look them up because they don't care if you're in vermont or not hmm. oh oh that's really cool send us the link would be great okay i will um, Ann Bud is actually doing a cutting and securing steaks workshop this Saturday. Wow. Um, sponsored by River City Yarns of Edmonton, Alberta. Okay. It's Saturday, 10 to 11 Mountain Time. So it'll be 12 to 1 Eastern Time. And um, uh, it's. I'm going to put it in the chat, the link to this. Okay. Um, and it's all, it's only $25. Wow. Canadian. Okay. I'm putting it in. Oh, well, that's US, Canadian money, maybe. But doesn't that mean it's less US? 20 yeah. to US. US. Yeah. yeah. Dollars. Okay. So it's in, it's in the chat, that link, um, since we've been talking steaks. Nice. And I'm also going to put the link into the Long Marks um, yarn. Yep. Because sometimes yep. you can browse what's upcoming and oh this might be an in class. No, it can't be if she's got Eastern, if she's got US. Mm -hmm. It's an online workshop. Yep. This Saturday. Here. And then I also dropped in the fiber side chats. So yeah, it's kind of fun. It feels like, you know, just this way to dip into the larger knitting community. And I guess that's also the fun part about the knit along that we've been doing here is hearing about where people are coming from and all of our different backgrounds that we're bringing to this experience with each other is definitely part of the, the good fun. I know it, it's it's so it makes me so happy to like see all your faces. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean any time that I put on these sweaters, like I'm gonna think of you guys and and your sweaters, you yeah. know. And maybe one day we'll be walking down the street like wearing our Ramonas, and you can be like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I think you. I think we should collect pictures of everybody in their Ramonas. Right. I idea. think Sue, you are right onto something. I think that would be a great thing as people finish. It would be nice to compile a little gallery um, to put together. And where is everybody located that's on right now? Mm -hmm. I'm in Maryland. Where, where in Maryland? Uh, Hagerstown, okay. which is right on the Pennsylvania border up 81. Yep. Do you want me Nash. to call on people that way? It's like yeah, not yeah, awkward. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good right, idea. Well, I'm going to go with, with circling on my screen because that way I can. All right, Mary Ellen, where are you joining us from tonight? I'm from Media, Pennsylvania, outside Philadelphia. Great. Oh, I, I used to have cousins in Media. You do? Yeah, my dad's from Wincote. Okay. Not mm. too far away. And let's see next. How about Lucy? Can you remind us where you're from? I'm from Pottsville, Pennsylvania. I'm about maybe two hours from Philadelphia. Two hours north of Philadelphia. Okay. Pennsylvania is represented today. Um, how about you, Bev? I'm from the Scudic Peninsula here in Maine. The quiet so side of the National Maine. Park. Huh? Yeah, it's way by it's for those of you not in Maine, it's like we call it down east. It's up and over over near um, Acadia. Um, OK, Teresa, how about you? I'm in uh, Urbana, Virginia, which is about an uh, hour and a half uh, east of Richmond on the peninsula. Uh, Judy. I'm in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And you said you're moving. Is that going to be also in Nashville or someplace else? No, I like cold weather. 
<laughs> so I'm moving far north, up into the Boston area, Boston and the general area. Hmm, great. Do you have family near I, there? Or? No, I just decided I like, I like New England. And, uh, yeah. and so that's what, just get a condo and have time to do some other things in life <laughs> other than what I'm doing now. <laughs> like go to the I'm cashmere really, goat. Yeah. Oh, I, well, yeah, like you can come up and make a road trip. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it because I've been there several times and uh, and have bought some things online as well. <laughs> so I'm really I'm really I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's an area that I'll feel very comfortable. And um, like I say, I enjoy cold weather. I've lived in cold weather and everybody here is like, what are you doing this for? I, you know, <laughs> they just shudder. They literally shudder. Oh, how could you go, you know, far north? And it's like, I've lived in the far north, <laughs> you know, and I love it. You know, I'm not afraid of cold weather. I, you know, you have coats and hats and gloves. And you just get to wear more knitwear. Come on. Yeah, we, yeah, have, yeah. We, we have less bugs. Mm. Well, I, I'm I'm absolutely 100 percent sure that is the right decision for me. <laughs> good, good. And my husband's um, going along with it, so that's very good. <laughs> even better. Yep. And Sarah and Sue, they're both in Rockport. Yeah, so we're we're only like a mile, mile and a half from the cashmere goat shop. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And actually I drive by it every day when I bring my son to middle school because Camden and Rockport are united in a lot of areas, particularly schools. Um, so yeah, and we get to be two generations doing this, which is kind of cool. <laughs> nice. And there was Very another cool. mother-daughter duo with on Sunday, right? Yeah. We've got a few mother daughters participating and um and yeah, we did have one on Sunday. So watch your watch your, your Sunday Ramona email. We've got some really nice photos from last week. And um actually that reminds me, I've been meaning to take a Zoom picture, which if you don't want to have your face in it, you could hold up your Ramona. Um is everybody okay <laughs> with a little screenshot? Let me I'll just give you some time to like, get your let me just make sure we're like yeah. equidistant before you do it. There yeah. you go. Because otherwise, okay, like so that person looks looks funny. <laughs> All right. So hold on. I'm gonna give you the um ready one, two, three. Oh my god, so cute. Amazing. <laughs> so we'll put that in the email too. Watch for yourself in the email. <laughs> oh, fabulous. And okay, so um Jennifer, you said this Edgecombe, is that where you are? Yeah, I'm on the Booth Bay Peninsula in Edgecombe. And, and I'm in Hope. Hope is uh, just a few miles outside of, well, Hope, my part of Hope is just a few miles outside of Camden. So I'm only about a seven minute commute to the Cashmere Goat. Nice. And I live on Penny Lane in Hope, which might be one of the cutest addresses you could ever have. Yeah, that is cute. <laughs> nice. I've got to measure my sleeve again. Getting close. It's a really tight. It's a really tight. Just... Oh, I love it when you measure and you're like, oh, I think this is the exact right amount, as opposed to when you measure and you're like, oh my God, I've gone too far. <laughs> Great. Well, we are just coming in on six o'clock and Alrighty. Um, I wanted to thank you all for showing up again and sharing an hour of knitting and conversation with each other it's a real bright spot of my week for sure well, thank, and, you uh, well, thank, thank you thank you thank you we'll see you next next wednesday
Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Happy New Year.